So as per the title of this video, I've decided to sell my Tudor Pelagos uh, 39. Bizarrely, there's not a real or really specific reason for this. Um, I've owned the watch for almost two years, so I bought it in November 2022. Um, and I've really enjoyed it and I still think it is an incredible watch. I still think it's almost a perfect watch. Um, but since buying my Zenith, I'm just not wearing it. So I've owned my Zenith for over a year now. Um, and I wear it virtually every day, like 95% of my time. I have a, a thing with the watches that I've got where I try and rotate them every one or two weeks. And if it comes to that watch is turning a rotation and I'm not wanting to wear it, or I'm taking it off before that one or two week period ends, I kind of give it three or four times. <clears throat> And then if I'm not wanting to wear it or, like I say, taking it off early, I kind of wonder why I've got it at all. I'm not one of those people that will have or has ever had 5, 10, 20, 100 watches. I just can't do that. If I've got something around of significant value and I'm not using it or getting a benefit from it, I don't see the point in having it and then I look to sell it, which is what happened with my IWC Mark 18 Le Petit Prince. I loved everything about the watch. If I was looking for a watch now and hadn't owned it, I'd be looking to buy it. Same with the Tudor Pelagos. Um, if I didn't own it, I'd be looking to buy it. But yeah, for me, the benefits of the Zenith are many, right? So a rubber strap and a, a um, ceramic case mean it looks the same as the, the day it was purchased. You can wear it all the time, every day, and it doesn't mark. And again, for some people, that's not a consideration. They won't like ceramic. They don't care about dings and dents and scratches. That is something that personally bothers me. So to have the scratch resistant properties like that and what it offers, but on a daily watch is fantastic. On top of that, it's quite a nice watch, right? It's got a really nice movement to it. It's very legible. It's got the big date complication. It's got a flyback chronograph complication. Um, and also it flies under the radar. I work in London. No one has a clue what it is. No one cares what it is. No one gives it a second look. A few people have said nice watch or whatever, but very few people understand what it is. So I'm not at risk of being robbed or anything like that. And sadly, the fact is the, the Pelagos is a very recognisable watch. Um, so while it's not a Rolex, it could be easily be mistaken for one. Um, and it is recognisable, whereas a Zenith just isn't. So the Zenith gets a huge amount of my wrist time. And also I've put my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra back on the bracelet. So when I do want to change it up, I've got a very nice kind of more blingy uh, watch to wear that I can also wear daily. And that, that's got loads of scratches and stuff. So I'm not adverse to scratches, just to be clear. I know these things get scratched and marked and dinked. And I'll do an update on my um, Omega since I had it serviced and it came back Pretty much perfect that's got loads of scratches and marks all over it um but i just don't i just haven't been gravitating towards the pelagos so i'm wearing my um zenith and then when i want to change something or from going somewhere smart or fancy or for whatever reason that's a little bit more dressy i'm putting on my uh, omega and i'm wearing my omega for daily work as well you know that I, I wear that to london without any problems as well it just doesn't have the same attention that um, some other watches might garner so with that, we'll flip around the camera, um, have a look at the watch. Um, and again, I'll probably just continue my rambling a little bit and then I'll, I'll close the video. So here we are, the watch in question. I, main, I maintain everything I've said in my previous um, reviews about this watch. It is a fantastic watch. The timekeeping is plus two seconds a day and I can actually get it to zero if you keep it in the correct position overnight. Um, I love the bezel still. I still really like the dial. I like the extra kind of bling that gives to it, given the fact it's titanium and it's, it can be a little bit dull, especially when you swap between titanium and a um, stainless steel watch. Um, it wears very comfortably. It's 107 grams for my seven inch wrists. It's got micro adjusting clasp. It literally has everything going for it. And what I still prefer, even with the recent Black Bay Chrono, because I looked at that, I still prefer the side profile of this watch. I still think the thickness of the case, the thickness of the bezel, the flat crystal is a far 
better looking watch than the Black Bay Chrono for me. I appreciate other people prefer the Black Bay Chrono. Um, sorry, Black Bay Chrono. Black Bay um, Monochrome. Sorry, Black Bay 41 Monochrome. But for me, this is a nicer looking watch and more what I'm after. It's got the more modern aesthetic um, that I'm after. But that is kind of what got me thinking about, well, if I'm... And also, I will say, actually, I did list it about a year ago and then took it off. So I kind of given it an extra nine months to see if it's something I'd, I'd want to keep. In, and as I say, it's not. But I also, you know, I like the red text. I, I like everything about it. Um, it's probably a little bit too much text on the dial. I've mentioned that before. Um, but yeah, it really is a lovely, lovely watch. And like I say, if I didn't own it, I'd be looking to buy it. Um, how's it worn? Um, I have... Um, refinished a couple of the links and I have refinished the uh, clasp. I honestly think you're a better person than me if you can tell the difference between that clasp and the links from factory. And I know I can't get full macro because I'm just using my camera phone, but you, you genuinely can't tell. It is a fantastic finish to it. Does it scratch any more than stainless steel? People keep bringing this up. I don't think it does. I think it scratches exactly the same amount of stainless steel. Um, I don't think it's better or worse. Um, I do think on my wrist, it wears really, really well. Um, it does feel a little bit small when I've come from my uh, Omega or my Zenith, but it wears very, very well. I've got no issues with the size of it at all. The bezel action. is absolutely superb. The extra detent at 12 o'clock is superb. It's a really, really nice watch. Um, it's got a nice taper on the bracelet. It's got a modern look and feel to it. I, I do really, really like it. I'm just not wearing it. Um, and like I say, I listed it a year ago and then took it off. Um, and I've given it another eight or nine months since then. And I just haven't started wearing it again. So if I put this one on, my Zenith, this is a better fit for my wrist. I will say that. I'm not comparing the two watches, right? They're completely different. But I've got a seven inch wrist and I do think this one fits it better. But yeah, I, it's a weird one. Um, it kind of reminds me of the sale of my IWC, like I said earlier. There's no real reason for it. It's got a lovely crown action as well. It pops out, you heard that. And then it's a really smooth winding action. Nice long power. So it is a perfect watch. I've got to be honest. I think one of the things I'm thinking is if I do sell it and I want to buy another one, you know, there, there there's thousands of them out there. So it's not like if I do suddenly get seller's remorse, um, I can just buy another. It's not like they're limited and there's very few or or anything like that. And also it frees up some funds, right? If I want to buy something else, I've then got £3,000 or so to possibly look at something else to try. Um yeah, it's a weird one. Um, it really is a fantastic watch. Will I regret selling it? I don't know. Um, probably not. I don't regret selling my Mark 18. But what I will say is if you are looking for one of these, um, don't let this put you off. It is an absolute belter. I'm just not someone that can have watches sitting around in a collection doing nothing, not being worn. I know lots of people are happy with that. Um, but it's just not something um, that sits well with me at all. Uh, and that's the only reason I'm selling it. I know lots of people are very happy to have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, hundreds of watches in some cases, but it's just not for me. If you do have any questions about this watch, um, obviously I've owned it for a while. Obviously, please just do let me know. I will just try and show you, actually. It, it, yeah. Like I say, people's concerns about it wearing more than stainless steel, I just don't think it's the case. Or scratching more easily, I think it's very, very similar, identical. I haven't. I certainly haven't noticed any more scratching, and I wear my watches in the same way. I do like that. It's very nice. Everything about it's really well made, to be fair. So on a lot of watches, you see like a stamped diver's extension, and it's just not here. And you've even got ceramic ball bearings on a diver's extension as well there. Spring loaded ceramic ball bearings. So when you close it in, even that sounds nice. Mm, am I making a mistake? Maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, like I say, uh, if you've got any questions or what are your thoughts about it, just let me know. Um, yeah, until the next video, I'll end this one there. Cheers, everyone.